Okay, so here's an example um, of a vector field and a curve where we might want to do the integral of the vector field along the curve. Um, starting with an example in the plane just to keep things a little bit simpler. Um, right, so remember that in this context here we might call this thing um, P of XY. We might call this part uh, Q of XY. And we want to apply the fundamental theorem of calculus. So the fundamental theorem of calculus has to do with integrating gradients, right? So we know that if we want to use the fundamental theorem, then this has got to be the partial derivative with respect to x of some function. And this has to be the partial derivative with respect to y of some function, right? Well, we don't know yet if that's true. But that's what we need to happen if we want to be able to apply the fundamental theorem of calculus. OK, so how can we go in being pretty sure that this is going to work out? Well, there, there's one quick test that you can do, right? We know that um, Clairaut's theorem says that as long as these come from a function which is twice continuously differentiable, and generally we assume that our vector fields are at least one time continuously differentiable, so if it does come from a gradient, then yeah, it's coming, uh, it's coming from a C2 function. So Clairaut's theorem says that the partial derivatives, the mixed partial derivatives, should be equal, right? And in this context, that means that, well, so fxy, right, that's the y derivative of the x derivative. Well, if, if, if the x derivative equals this p, then it would mean that the derivative of p with respect to y should have to equal the x derivative of the y derivative, which is q. So dp dy should equal dq dx. So, so this here, right, this equation here, this is a necessary condition. And so before you proceed, before you go about trying to find your function and see if things work, well, you might try this. You might see if you can get it to work. So we might say, okay, let's try dp dy, okay? So that's going to be the derivative with respect to y of 2x cos y minus y cos x. And that's going to give me minus 2x sine y minus cos x. Now I calculate dq dx. So that's the derivative with respect to x of minus x squared sine y minus sine x. And that's going to give me minus 2x sine y minus cos x. And we say, haha, it checks out, right? These, these are... Definitely the same. Okay, so that tells me that my function most likely is a gradient. It most likely comes from, a, um, from some potential function f, right? Uh, we've seen examples. We did one in class. We've seen it uh, that, that it's not a guarantee. Um, things can still go wrong, but it makes it quite likely. So now we say, okay, so let's see. So on the one hand, this lets me assume that my x derivative, it must be 2x cos y minus y cos x. And I say, OK. Um, so that's the partial derivative with respect to x of some function. Well, we know how to figure out what that function must have been. We take the antiderivative. The antiderivative of 2x is 
x squared. And the antiderivative of cos is sine. Oops, sorry, minus um, y. y sine x, right? Um, plus, possibly, possibly there's some function of y, right? Because if there's something that depends only on y, when you take the partial with respect to x, it's going to disappear, okay? On the other hand, we want the y derivative to be q. So we want the y derivative to be minus x squared sine y minus y or minus sine x right there. and so if we take the antiderivative with respect to y well you see that you get in this case the same result right we're going to get x squared cos y because the antiderivative for sine is negative cos this is sort of a constant with respect to y so we multiply by y to take the antiderivative y sine x. There might be some function here that depends only on x, but you look at this and you say, oh look, um, this part here, right, already agrees, so you can ignore this, right, you don't need it. Um, you'd only need to bring those into the picture if you were off by something. So if, if, this, if this one down here had some function of x that was missing up here, or if this one had some function of y that was missing down there, um, then you can use these to adjust. In this case, you've got a result. You can see that things agree. So we can say that um, my vector field is the gradient of f, where f of x, y, is x squared cos y minus y sine x. That means that the integral along c of f dot dr, well, that's the integral along c of the gradient of f dot dr. Fundamental theorem says that that should be f at, okay, so what's the final point? Uh, when x equals 2, y equals 4. So f at 2, 4, minus the initial, when x is 0, so is y. f at 0, 0. Okay, so I'm going to get um, 4 cosine of 4 minus 4 sine of 2, and that's the integral, right, using fundamental theorem. Uh, so you got to do some work here to come up with the antiderivative, right, uh, a little bit of verification work to make sure that this work here is worth your time. Ultimately, though, I think it's still, it's still a time savings over trying to parameterize and, and do the integral by hand. I think you're still probably better off using the fundamental theorem.